Desi Church. And we just want to say a quick welcome. Thank you so much for being a part. And we want to give you some helpful information before the service starts. Hey, if you're new here to Destiny Church, we've got a way to get connected. We want to know you. We want to get to know you a little bit more. And one way that we do that is through a connect card found in the seat back in front of you. We would love for you to fill that out, carry that out to the Connect Center in the lobby. And we want to bless you with a welcome gift today for it being your first time here at the church. Hey, and another news, listen, we've got a worship experience catered for all the adults and all the teens uh, here at Destiny Church, but we've also got an amazing kids experience upstairs ready for your little ones. Uh, speaking for myself, me and my wife, we've got a nine-year-old hear the Word of God, they get to worship, and they get to have a lot of fun. And I want you to be able to have that same experience where you can enjoy the Sunday service today and your kids can also enjoy an experience catered for them. So if you've got kids, go out to the uh, Welcome Center, go out to the Kids Center, go ahead, get them checked in today before service starts. You've got plenty of time. Uh, we are so glad that you and your family have joined us today. Hey, and just a, real quick, service is about to start. Uh, we would love for you to silence all cell phones just to eliminate any distractions in the room. We want to make sure that we maximize our opportunity and we put all of our attention on the one true God today as we worship. And one way that we can do that is through silencing our cell phones before the service starts today. Also, if you are a nursing mother or you've got a little one that is staying with you during the service today, we've actually got a mom's room in the back of the worship center dedicated for you with a changing station with some chairs. It's got some nice lighting and the service is actually piped in through there on the TV so you don't miss a thing. So if you have an interruption, if you've got just a little mishap during service with one of your little ones, don't worry, you're not gonna miss anything. We've got a mom's room just for you in the back of the worship center. Listen, church, service is going to be starting shortly. Can we go ahead and prepare our hearts to worship passionately in this room? You have the freedom to praise, and we cannot wait to enter into God's presence together today collectively as one. So go ahead, prepare your hearts, prepare your minds. Service is going to be starting soon. We love you so much, family. glad that you chose to join us today at Destiny Church. You know, one of the things we're about here is moving people toward God. And today, when you got up out of your bed and you started moving toward the church, you were moving toward where the presence of God is going to meet a whole group of people all day long as we move in and out of these services. And we're so glad you chose to be a part of that. One of those ways we move closer to God is through passionate worship. And I want to encourage you today to passionately worship Jesus. He's been so good to us. So sing loud with us. Lift your hands, clap your hands, shout to the Lord. Let's give God praise and give Him credit where all credit is due. He's worthy of our praise. Listen, we're so thankful you came, and it's our hope that when you leave today, that you will leave knowing that you have met with Jesus.
church. Can you stand on your feet this morning? Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord, church? Come on, can you make some noise for Jesus if you're excited this morning? Come on, hey, before we get started, can you turn to your neighbor and say, I'm glad that you're here this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Turn to your other neighbor and say, you look good. And I hope that you sing good this morning. <laughs> hey, if you're watching online, we're so glad that you're here. Come on, let's worship together this morning. Come on, we worship you, Jesus. Put your hands together this morning, church. Come on, can you praise Him with everything you have this morning, church? As he walks into the room and where people pray and where we hear praise as he hears praise. Come on, can you lift your voices to the King this morning, church? Oh. Come on, every voice, sing that again. There is a sound. There is a sound. I love to hear. It's a sound.
Oh God. 
I'm so thankful that you showed back this, back up the Sunday after Easter. That's amazing. We are glad that you are here today. If you're a first-time guest, we just want to say hey. So y'all, Destiny family, give it up for all of our first-time guests today. Yeah. We've got some instructions for you in just a moment. But I just wanted to tell you, uh, just thank you for being here today. And uh, just talk to you again about generosity. I want to thank you for being a generous church. Uh, the Word of God tells us to bring our tithe to the storehouse. We believe that the tithe belongs to God. And uh, a tithe is a tenth of what we have or what, what comes into our, our bank accounts, what we make and what we earn. And, and we bring that back to the Lord and we let Him do what He wants to with that. And uh, we've seen amazing things happen uh, just already this year for what God's doing. And, and I want you to know that... Um, that in a, in a couple weeks, I'm going to be flying to a little country on the continent of Africa called Burkina Faso. And uh, while we're in Burkina Faso, I, I have to wear a suit the whole time I'm there, and it's hot. And uh, I will wear a suit three days in a row, four, four days in a row, actually. Uh, and we will, be, we will be preaching and attending three Bible college graduations. Uh, that's, that's priority one, the ministry that we're a part of that builds Bible college all over the globe. Uh, we're going to be there, and so we'll be preaching those graduations that last three to four hours. And uh, it's Africa, y'all. Everything lasts a long time, and it's amazing. It's an incredible place to go. Uh, and we're going to be able to hang out with pastors who have literally, literally given their lives up to serve Jesus, fighting against um, all kinds of persecution, uh, even in that country, uh, the, the persecution from people who don't believe in Christianity is strong there, and there's a lot of violence against Christians. And so I'm just so grateful that I get to be there and be a part of that and represent Jesus and represent this local body of believers and go there and tell them, hey, we're with you. And those pastors, when they get trained up and they graduate, they're not going to like some great position that's paying them a salary or anything like that. No, they're going back into their villages and they'll start a church under a tree if they have to. They'll start a church in a hut or underneath a few pieces of tin and they'll get in that little place and they'll start telling people about Jesus and the proof will be in the power of the Holy Spirit. Paul said we don't come to you with eloquent speech or man's wisdom but through the power and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit and the proof will be in that and churches are being planted all over the continent of Africa like that right now. All around the world it's happening, but I get to be there in that little small country, Burkina Faso, for just a few days. I can't tell you the city that we're flying into because I cannot pronounce it, okay? And so I will learn eventually. But here's why I'm telling you that. When you give, 
you're given to that. We're going to give you an opportunity to give to Priority One big time in a few weeks. And we're going to make, we're going to make some pledges to give throughout the year to Burkina Faso for building dorms for these pastors because they don't have a place to stay. The dorms literally are 15 by 9 rooms uh, where the pastor and his wife, usually five or six people will live in there, pastor, wife, and kids. And they'll stay there for uh, a year or two and train. And then they get sent out. And when they do that, and when you give, you're giving to things like that to see the gospel preached all around the world and it matters it matters so thank you for giving texting to give venmoing give online giving the boxes in the back however you want to do that let me pray father i just thank you that we get to give and we get to be a part of the generosity of your heart lord we get to be a part of seeing the world reached for you and the gospel preached lord it's amazing to me lord how uh, when your gospel goes forth uh, that it's persecuted. It's because it's love, Lord. It's not persecuting, but it draws persecution because it's just the love of Jesus. And the enemy hates that. But, Lord, we know that we are, we are strong because you are strong in us, Lord. And you have sent people around the world to preach the gospel of Jesus. We thank you for those pastors, those sweet pastors and their wives and their families, Lord, in, in, in places like Burkina Faso who are giving all they have to see you do a work back in their communities, in their villages. And, Lord, we give you praise and honor. We're so honored to be able to be a part of something like that, Jesus. We thank you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Right before you are seated, you can, uh, you can turn around and say hey to each other. We're so glad that you're here this morning. My name's Hunter. Uh, and I just want to take a quick second to tell you some things that are happening at our church. But first, we want to welcome all of our first-time guests. We're so glad that you joined us today. We want to connect with you on a personal level. And one of the ways we do that, there's a card in the seat back in front of you. We want you to fill that out, drop it off at the Connect table on your way out. There's a team there. They want to get a gift in your hand, answer any questions, and let you know that we're so glad that you're here this morning. And we've got a lot coming up here at Destiny. The first thing being Encounter Night. It's next Sunday. It is at 6.30. And we're going to come. We're going to worship together. And we want you to invite and come ready for the Lord to move. Those nights are powerful. And we can't wait for it. And we're very excited to announce that we're doing our very first Young Adults Night on April the 9th at 6.30. This is for 18 to 30-year-olds. And we want to um, be intentional about just investing in you, creating a place where you can um, encounter the Lord and meet each other. And so we're going to have free coffee and child care. Okay, so make sure that you're there for that. And then on the 19th, we've got a men's night happening. All the dudes, just come on, tell everyone about it. We're going to have some food. We're going to encounter the Lord. And we're just going to hear from him all together as men. So make sure you put that on your calendar. And then we'll end that weekend with our favorite thing here at Destiny Church, and that's Baptism Sunday. So if you've given your life to the Lord, we want to celebrate you. We want to hear your story, and we want you to know that we're so excited for what the Lord is doing in your life. So you can sign up online. You can let us know in the lobby. And we can't wait. On the 21st, we're going to have a party together, and it's going to be an incredible day, Baptism Sunday. Well, hey. We're ready for the message. We know it's going to be powerful. So why don't you pull out your notes, get your Bible ready, and lean in for week two of Reset. thankful that Jesus reset your life. Amen? How many of y'all are thankful that he's the risen king? Y'all do know he's still alive today, not just on Easter Sunday, right? Awesome. Well, hey, I do want to, uh, I do want to uh, give you a couple things. Last week was an incredible week. It really was. And we don't want to go uh, any further without stopping to thank God for what he did. Um, we had 
1,589 people between both campuses last weekend between Columbia and Lewisburg. I want to give God praise for that. Um, but I want to give, I want to break those numbers down just to show you what God's doing. Uh, here in Columbia, we had 920, which is amazing. Y'all give God praise for that. 920 people. Lewisburg, who's been open for just a little bit over a year, we opened that campus up last January, January 22nd. They had 669 people come through the doors last weekend. Um, it took us 10 years as a church from the time we planted it to see 600 people at an Easter service. So I'm pretty thankful for what God did, but I, those numbers are great. Here's the best. Between our adults and our kids, between both services, both campuses, all, all seven services, we had 73 people give their lives to Jesus last weekend. That is amazing. Come on. That's what it's all about. Amen. Um, and right before I get into the message, I, I do want to tell you, um, just want to reiterate two things that you saw on the, on the announcements. One is, if you're a young adult, that 18 to 30 year old, whether you're married or not married, it's not a singles group, all right? It's just younger adults getting together, finding community. We believe that, that freedom happens in community, that strength in your life happens in community. We want you to, we want you to take advantage of this Tuesday night uh, event that we have coming. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be amazing. Uh, the the worship team's ready to go, and they're going to lead you in worship that night on Tuesday night, and just give you a time to to fellowship with each other. And we believe that even smaller groups will break out of that group of people, and uh, we'll just see life begin to happen. So make sure you do that. And if you've got kids, you need not worry because there is free childcare. So bring them and drop them off at childcare, and let them take care of them. I promise. And then all the men in the room say, "Ugh." All right, all right, that's good. No, some of you men, you don't just grunt. You, you actually have words, and that's a good thing. Um, I will say this. Uh, we, have, we have all the, the, the men from Columbia uh, Destiny Campus, the men from Lewisburg Destiny Campus. We have men from Be the Bush Ministries that will be coming uh, over from the Shelbyville area. Uh, that's a, it's a recovery ministry from Eight Oaks Ministries down in Lawrence County. A recovery ministry, Place of Hope from here in town. GWP will be here. All of us will be coming. And then all of the men from the Destiny Campus, campuses, both Columbia and Lewisburg, will be here. We're going to eat chili. And the way that we do that is that you make it and we're going to judge it. I'm not going to judge it because I'll be... I'll be tasting chili for five days, but somebody who loves chili will do that, and you can make a pot of chili and bring it, and that's how we're going to feed each other, and it's going to be, well, we're not going to feed each other, but, you know, have food for you to eat and be odd at a men's night, wouldn't it? So uh, so anyway, we, we, we're we going to have that, and then we're going to give away about $500 worth of gifts, and there's going to be some really good ones in there. So you guys want to be here, and uh, just make sure you show up, bring your friends, sign up. Okay. All right, y'all good with that? So... We're in reset. Y'all can turn with me to Isaiah chapter 43. That's a good, good place to start today for us. Last week we talked about Jesus resetting the world and that resurrection was the reset. And this week we're going to talk about resetting, uh, just reset my heart, like God reset my heart. And, uh, and I was just thinking what would be a, a time appropriate, like song I could do or something I could just remind you so you wouldn't forget about it. And uh, it's just so timely and appropriate to sing Once upon a time I was falling in love But now I'm only falling apart Nothing I could do but a total eclipse of the heart And I need you more than that. Oh, anyway, okay So I don't know what the rest of it. I don't know the words. To it. I wasn't able to listen to rock and roll music, y'all, when I was a teenager. Okay, it was like foosball. It was of the devil. All right, you couldn't listen to it. So, hey, we are so so glad you're here. Thank you, Caleb, for taking us back a little bit. That was a good, good thing. I would like to tell you that I was praying this week and God dropped that in my heart, but that is not how that happened. Okay, uh, it just happened. But we do need the reset and. Uh, how many of y'all know that like when the when eclipses happen, I think it's God's way of like, I'm going to do two or three of these a year for the earth, and it's going to freak out humanity, and they're going to come up with all kinds of different reasons that they happen and, and what it means. Because in no other country have I seen it like it is in the United States, that every time an eclipse happens, the apocalypse is here. All right, I mean, like you got apocalyptic, apocalyptic people that are running around, oh my gosh, the end is there. It's like, I mean, if we're telling people about Jesus, yes, the end is near. We just don't know when it's coming. Jesus told us that. So if y'all been trying to figure out when Jesus is going to come back, stop. Because he said, he said you, you won't know, all right? So, so I'd say stop like my kids used to say it. But 
I, I, I think it's funny. I just thought I was getting a, a picture in my mind of people with their mules yesterday with eclipse glasses on and on the mules. And I saw something where people said, make sure you get your animals in. Now, how many of y'all are going to go out tomorrow and stare at the eclipse? That's right. Have y'all not learned anything? You know, you know, you don't, you know, with your glasses, right? But people are like, get your animals in. I'm like, what about all the wild animals? They're, they're still animals. Like, they're not. I, I mean, I go deer hunting in the fall, and I bet you a bunch of them won't be running into trees because of the eclipse in the spring, all right? So they, they're smart enough to look down. So y'all look down tomorrow. Don't look up. Okay. All right. We're done with the eclipse. We're back to reset. So today I want to talk to you about resetting your heart. I was thinking about this and a few months ago as we were talking about this series in particular and just about how our hearts are so in need of Jesus and how in the church m much of the time we miss out and uh, we miss out that, that regeneration of our heart and the renewing of our heart uh, and it's so important that we have that and so I want to take you just to give us some foundation for the rest of the reset series uh, to the prophet Isaiah chapter 43 verse 18 he says forget the former things do not dwell on the past. Look at your neighbor and say, stop dwelling on the past. And then God says this, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me. The jackals and the owls because I provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. In other words, his spirit will flow wherever his spirit wants to flow, whether we think his spirit shouldn't flow through there or not. We don't need to forget the story of Jonah who God said, go tell Nineveh about me. And Jonah said, I'm not telling them because they don't love you and I don't love them because they don't love you. And God's like, it's basically, God, it's a wasteland. God said, I will put my spirit in any wasteland that I want to put my spirit in. And so I, I just want you to know, like, when he says, I'll provide water in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Why? To give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself. Why would he give them a drink? That they may proclaim my praise. So he raises people up. He runs his spirit through any wasteland of life that he wants to, his spirit to run through, the rivers of his spirit. It's, the reason he does that is so people can be completely refreshed and they can proclaim his name and proclaim his praise. When you are reset, you are positioned for praise. That's why we talk about passionate worship here at Destiny Church. But today I want to just share for a few moments about your heart. And my heart is my feelings. And I, I want to kind of take it from what I, what I see in the Scripture. It's more when the Scripture talks about the heart, it's, it's the control center from where all of our decisions are made. And, and that control center needs to be unplugged and plugged back in at times. It needs to be worked on. I was just at the hospital on Thursday with a 26-year-old. It was his birthday on Thursday. About six months ago, he got sick. And he, he, he was a, he's a hard-working guy. He has a, has a business. He, he, uh, he has a, a stone business where, where they lay, uh, do custom stone work on houses and stuff. And so he's, he's got a crew and all that stuff's going on in his life. But he's getting weaker and weaker and he can't do the work. He can just basically drive to the job site and check on it and drive back home and, and leave his other guys working on it. And he's a very successful young man already doing a great job. Uh, just taking care of him and his wife. And he started getting really, really sick. And his doctors couldn't figure it out. They sent him to a specialist. They sent him to another specialist. And finally, he got to a cardiologist and they checked him out. And he had an infection in his heart. An infection in his heart. And that infection in his heart has basically destroyed one of the valves in his heart. And they had to go through his ribs on this side. And they went in a procedure that they do now that they go in where they don't have to cut his sternum open. And they went in and they put a new valve in that side of his, in that part of his heart at 26 years old. Because if that part of his heart was left alone and that affection was left there, it would kill him. He would die from that. But because of medical science and, they, they, and, and God gave them all that knowledge and, they, they just, and the healing work in the hands of Jesus, they were able to go in and take care of that problem. And I, I would submit to you today that many of us in this room, we have a spiritual heart infection. It's in our bloodstream. It's pumping through our heart. It's going right through the very control center of our lives. And our heart is in danger of, of getting to a place where, where, we, where, we, where it's not working right for us. And some of you sitting in this room, you could have been in church your whole life and you still have a problem with your heart. And you've got a sick heart. 
And I want to talk to you about that. I'm going to give you a problem and a solution again today. The very first problem is this. When it comes to being reset, there's a problem with my heart. You have a heart problem. I have a heart problem. Jeremiah 17.9 tells, tells me that my heart is unhealthy. It says the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. And who can understand that? So my heart is unhealthy. Say, I have an unhealthy heart. So the first thing is my heart lies. It does. Shannon and I had a lot of time in the truck yesterday, and we're driving down the road. Y'all heard me talk about this song before, and I love Reba, and she was singing, The heart won't lie. You know, sometimes life gets in the way. And I'm like, come on, sing it, Reba. Go, girl. And I'm like, but you're singing a lie to me because my heart lies. My emotions, my feelings, they will lie. It's, it's kind of that part. It's that feeling part of us, and our heart will lie to us. But if your, heart, and if your heart's not reset by the Spirit of God, then listening to your heart will get you in a heap of trouble. Anybody by a show of hands, you can do it from home as well if you're watching from home. Anybody by a show of hands say, hey, my heart's lied to me before. It's led me down a bad road. That's right. Oh, yeah. Y'all think in the back about that, that eighth grade boyfriend or girlfriend, ain't you? You're like, what was I thinking? All right, so your heart lied to you. He says it's, it's, it's deceitful. It lies. It's also sick. It's beyond cure. Your, your heart, it says, it says my heart is beyond cure. In other words, I have to have a miracle for my heart to be right. Your, your, your heart is sick and beyond your ability to fix it. And you must have Jesus to have healing for your heart. It, 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 it's for your heart that Jesus came and died. Don't forget that. That he came and died so that you could be healed from the, from the debilitating illness that you have that's causing your heart to deteriorate. And Jesus said it isn't the healed who need a doctor, but it's the sick who need a doctor. So there's nothing wrong with us going ahead and saying today that I've got a problem. My heart's sick. But there's another problem. My heart's not just unhealthy. My heart is also unwilling. I have an unwilling heart. Ezekiel 36, 25 and 26 says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart. Everybody say a new heart. And put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone. I'm going to stop right there. We'll get back to this scripture in a little bit. But he said, I will remove from you your heart of stone. In other words, you're cold hearted at times. Your heart, heart's like a rock. It's callous. It's, it's just, it's, it's hard and, and it's, it, there's no breaking through it. And when you think about that, you're like, I don't know if my heart's hard. Let me, let me put it another way that my wife shared with me. It's not just a hard or calloused heart. It's a numb heart. Because sometimes we think, oh, well, we're just numb. Anybody ever just felt numb to some things in life? You just felt numb? And, and you're like, I, I, I don't, I don't want to lift my hands and worship Jesus at church. As a matter of fact, I don't want to go to church. I don't, wa I don't want to talk to people at work. I don't want to deal with my problems. I don't want to deal with life. I don't want to deal with my kids. I don't want to deal with my parents. I just don't want to do it. I'm just numb. I'm just like, I just, I just really don't. I, I just don't. Like you're at that point where you just can't even, right? You remember that a few years ago? Like we've lost our ability to even. Like you've completely lost it. Like you can't even. Like you can't, you can't, you can't even move. Or, or it feels like you can't hardly breathe. Like you're just numb. And a lot of times that numb heart is an unwilling heart. Because we've decided to keep ourselves in a cold place that keeps our heart numb. When there is warmth, the closer we get to Jesus... And he begins to thaw out that icy, cold, hardened heart. He begins to melt that heart of stone. And why do we have that? Because of life. Anybody ever have life hit them? Yeah, right between the eyes. Yeah, and it hurts. Sometimes it hits you in the back. You didn't see it coming. And there's hurt. And there's disappointment. There's unfulfilled dreams. There's unmet expectations from the ones that you loved and you thought were always for you. There's loss. There's sickness. There's lack of change. And when your heart begins to harden, you begin to withdraw and get further from the one thing that can melt the heart of stone and make you pliable again, and that's Jesus. He can reset your heart. Reset your unwillingness to cause you to have a willing heart. The hardness of heart becomes the very thing that kills us spiritually and keeps us from our best life. Paul said it like this. He said, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is weak. And see, if you're unwilling to allow God to work in your life, He will not force you to allow Him to do it. But 
You, you need to know that there's something deep inside of you, even in the most numb time of your life, in the most heart-hardened time of your life, there's a crying out deep inside of you that knows what you know, that you need what you need, but you're not willing to do it because you're just like, Lord, I'm just not willing to let you get to my heart because if you get to my heart, then you have to do heart surgery and you have to put, put me on the, on the table. You have to put me to sleep. You have to open me up and work on me. My friend who went to have heart surgery this last week, had he not gotten in his car and driven up there to the hospital and said okay you can put needles in my arms you can put IVs in me and you can put me to sleep and work on me for six to eight hours while I'm on a bypass machine and had he not allowed them to do that his heart would still be sick he couldn't do the work that the doctors did but the doctors couldn't do the work that he did by getting himself there they didn't force him to come and God gave you a free will and he's not going to force you to get on the table but what he's saying is if you will come to me and you will put your life in my hands, I'll do heart surgery on you. And I will take your heart of stone and melt it. I'll change you. But far too often you and I are unwilling to say, God, come and change my heart. So my heart's unhealthy, my heart's unwilling. That's the problem. Another problem is my heart is uncommitted. Matthew 6, 21 says this, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Oh, I know we like to use that when we're talking to people about money. It's not just about money. It's about your life. If you're going, if, if you're going, to, if you're going to live your life for Jesus and, and your heart be like His, then it's time to just go ahead and admit that sometimes my heart's uncommitted. I can tell you about your finances, though. If you want to see where your heart is, just look at where you spend your money. Y'all would find out that my heart's at the Shell Station in Summertown. <laughs> nope, I'm almost done with honey buns. Now it's biscuits. But I still like honey buns. Right? I know, I've been saying it for years. Somebody's like, do you need a help? <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> Appreciate it, Ronnie. You're my brother. I love you so much. I'm not telling you anything else about my life. You're going to throw it back at me right in the middle of my sermon while we're broadcasting. <laughs> you know, but if you look, you'll see where your heart is. You'll see where, you, where, you, where your interests are. For where your treasure, your interest is, that's where your heart will be. And I want to talk to you today about part of that treasure. It's the hidden treasure, which I, I would call sin. It's the part of our life that we like this part of our life. Not many people around here know about it. Like, we don't, we don't tell everybody about that. Like, it's a, a testimony time. We don't say, oh, I just need to tell y'all about all my secret sin tonight. <laughs> and that, that can happen in life groups. That's why you need life groups. And you get with four or five or six or ten people, and you get to know them, you begin, the walls begin to break down, and you find a safe place to talk about your life Amen. with people that you can trust and that you can do life with. Yes. That's another message, right? It's important. Maybe ask yourself this. If I were going to be alone for two or three days and I had zero accountability and I'm all by myself and nobody would ever know anything that I did, where would my heart take me? Where would this take me? Where would this take me? Where would stuff that goes in this that's stronger than water take me? Where would those old relationships that I, I'd said I'd never go back to, where would they take me? Where would, where would my, my own personal thought of myself take me? Would I, would I be able to bask in the fact that I'm God's child or would I begin to tear myself down for the next two or three days and find myself in a deeper depression than I've ever been in? Because your heart will lie and part of your heart is uncommitted to God and you've not allowed Him to take care of it. And you have this place. And the reason we have that place is because it's a comfortable place for us. And we, are, we, are, we have a counterfeit place. of We think it's a place of peace because it's momentarily. But remember what the scripture says about sin. Sin is fun for a season. I've never heard anybody say, man, I'm going to go out and sin. And it's not going to be so terrible and so bad. And I'm not going to have any fun. No, sin's fun for a season. But in the end, it leads to destruction. Yeah. And it will completely tear your heart apart. 
more times than not, we are uncommitted to heart transformation because we have buried sinful treasure and we are not willing to commit even the darkest areas of our lives to Jesus. We call, some people call that guilty pleasures. There's really no guilty, true guilty pleasures with a believer. Like we give the Lord our hearts. And many times we have committed to our sinful life more than we have committed to Jesus. And what he is asking is for a heart that's committed in every area. Because many times we commit to Jesus on Sunday and we commit to that hidden treasure of sin Monday through Saturday. And sometimes Sunday afternoon if we had a bad Sunday or I didn't preach a good sermon. <laughs> or somebody made you mad. Whatever it is. How do we know this? It's by how we respond, how we react in life. And I believe that as our heart becomes more committed to allow Jesus to work on it, the more we will find ourselves responding differently. Uh, and, and we find ourselves responding differently to what life throws at us. Our commitment to God matters, and He isn't looking for perfect. He's just looking for committed people. He wants you to be committed. So, yeah, my heart's unhealthy at times. My heart's unwilling, and my heart can be uncommitted at times. And, and God is saying, I can make you healthy. I can give you the strength to be willing. I'm not going to make you willing. And I can give you the strength to be committed. He will not make you commit either, but he'll give you the strength to be able to commit. So if there's a problem, there's a solution, right? We talked about that last week. The solution for this is to go to God in prayer and ask him some questions. The first thing is ask God to give me a clean heart. Oh, I love this. Um, Psalm 51 says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Amen. But what was the psalmist David saying? He's saying, God, I need a pure heart. Clean my heart up. One of my mentors, Rusty Nelson, who pastors, well, he just retired from the Rock Family Worship Center in Huntsville, he wrote a song back in the late 80s, early 90s. It says, a pure heart, that's what I long for. Y'all probably haven't even heard that song. A heart that follows hard after thee. A pure heart, that's what I long for. See, that's our prayer. A heart that follows hard after thee. Then it says, a heart that finds, hides your word. So that sin will not come in. A heart that's undivided. But one you rule and reign. A heart that beats compassion. And it pleases you, my Lord. A sweet aroma of worship. That rises to your throne. See, our heart can be cleaned up by Jesus. We can't clean him. Clean our heart, but Jesus can clean our heart. And that's where the reset really happens. When we allow Jesus to get involved and we say, Jesus, clean my heart. We already know based on what we just talked about that our heart is sick and the only one that can heal it is Jesus. When you go to talk to people about Jesus and they say, well, I don't know, I can't come to church until I get things right. Just tell them that your pastor said this Sunday that the last time he went fishing and he goes a lot, he's never caught a fish fillet. They stink. Dookie comes out of them when you clean them. Just being really honest with y'all, all right? It's gross. You got to get the scales off of them. You got to get the meat off the bones if you're going to fillet them. Some of y'all are getting mad at me already. We don't fillet fish. We fry them whole. But all of those different things, right? And then it's at that place. God takes care of all of that. That's why we've said since we started Destiny Church, we're a group of imperfect people serving a pe perfect God. You're like, I've got problems Welcome to the family. Welcome to the club. We are a gang of people who understand that we've all got problems. And our hearts are sick and we need Jesus to reset our hearts. And he's the one who can do it. But our heart's been polluted, infiltrated by the world, infected by the world around us. And what it produces in us is a godless way of living. We become angry. We're jealous. There's perversion. There's lying and cheating. There's all types of sexual sin. I'm not talking about outside the church. I'm talking about inside the church. Our thoughts are ripped apart. We're going to talk about our minds for the whole service next week. The whole message will be about our mind. Gossip, 
It tears us apart, tears our hearts apart, tears the people around us apart. Addiction created by all of the, a lot of those things that we don't know how to cope, and so we end up getting addicted to something to try to fix another problem that only Jesus can fix. There's no substance on this planet that can clean our heart. Only Jesus can do that. And then we ask God not to just clean our heart, but to cover our heart. I love the scripture that says, Under the shadow of your wings I will abide. Like I'll live in the shadow of your wings. But here's a great one for us. Here's our part of this. Proverbs 4.33. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from that heart. Because my heart is pliable and it's susceptible to whatever is put into it. When I constantly take things into my life, it's affecting my heart. We, we've talked about there are gates to our heart. The eye gate, the ear gate, even the mouth, what we speak. Our words are like a boomerang. They come back to us. Y'all do know that, right? How many of y'all have ever experienced your words being like a boomerang? Uh-huh. Yep. Yep. You learned that, didn't you? And it's, it's, it hurts and it, it, it destroys your heart. When it comes to physical health, there are specific foods that are bad for your heart. Don't say it. All right, so I know what y'all are trying to do. But then there are foods that are heart healthy. You're like, ooh, heart healthy foods. But once, you're, once your body gets used to heart healthy foods, they're good for you and you like them. And spiritually, if it's not heart healthy, we should stop allowing it into our lives. Whatever it is, if it's unhealthy for your life, stop allowing it in. It's hurting you. This is why young girls, young teenage girls, they're finding themselves wanting to dress like a 25-year-old when they're 12 because they see 12-year-olds on TikTok dressing like 25-year-olds. And their little minds are completely thinking that, oh, I have to look like this to be noticed. And at some point, that young lady needs to understand that I'm enough because Jesus made me who I am. It's important to know that. This is why young men think that they have to put another notch on their belt and do whatever all the other guys in the locker room are talking about before, so that they can be accepted by everyone else. And, they, and they're pushed into these things. But it doesn't just stop in those early formative years. It's in adult years as well. We have to get another job and another vehicle and another house so that we can keep up with the people who are down the road. Y'all trying to keep up with the Joneses. I live in the Amish community. I'm trying to keep up with the Yoders and the Gingriches. All right? So I just want y'all to know that. They are my neighbors. But whatever it is in your life, you're, you're, you're trying to do things to, to keep you at, at a place to where it feels like that's what's making your heart healthy. All the time you're infecting your heart with the ways of the world. You usually know what that, that is, but sometimes you need to be educated as to what the ways of the world are and what the Word of God says about those ways. And, and look at the guide from the Word of God to know that you're taking in things that are not healthy for your heart. Gossip, I said it already, it will destroy your heart. It will kill your heart. You want to lose respect? Gossip, but do it immediately. You gain, you gain respect in drops. You lose respect in buckets. So as soon as you do say one negative thing about somebody, you've lost respect with that person and everyone that they told that you said that negative thing about them. Everyone that loves them and cares about them and they went to because you hurt them with your words. You just lost respect with all those people and it may take you decades to build back what you had in the first place with them. And you may never build it back with some people. It will destroy you continually allowing sexually inappropriate material through your eyes and your ears. The talk about it, the looking at it, all of that stuff, all of that we have we have just gone, we've just keep 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 dumbing down and pushing the line down, like, oh, there's not there's not a real bar here. Because we're so used to it and we're numb to it, and our hearts are hardened to that, and we need to pay attention. Letting your day day become filled with negative news, which that means if you have the news on, that's what that means. News equal negative now. Like, that's what sells. Y'all know that. Like, when, when something happens, you want to look up the negative stuff. Nobody ever wants to look up when somebody won a ball game. Like, oh, I want to go see who won that ball game. But you want to know when somebody got put in jail or they did all this. Or you want to know the latest political thing that's going on in the political rhetoric. Not all of you. The younger generation in here, you're probably like, I don't even care about politics. And that's good. What I'm going to ask you to do is, like, like, I want you to think about Jesus for the rest of your life. Vote with a really good Christian conscience and vote the way that you feel the Lord tells you to, but don't get all caught up in all that stuff all the time because it'll destroy your heart and it'll cause you to get numb and hard toward the Lord. I don't want to be 
I don't want to be a Christian because I live in the USA. I want to be a, a Christ follower of Jesus Christ because he's the Savior of my soul. Amen? That's what I want to be. And that matters. That matters. Replacing time with Jesus with something else will cause your heart to get sick. And it will cause your heart to not be guarded. So guard that heart. Cover your heart. Ask Jesus to clean your heart. And then the last thing, ask Him to conform your heart. I want to read the rest of verse 26 of Ezekiel chapter 36. He says, I will remove from your heart a heart of stone, and I will give you a heart of flesh. When we ask God to conform our hearts, we are asking Him to change it, to look like Him. In other words, I will soften that heart, and I will make it. The Lord saying, I will make it like putting a piece of clay on a potter's wheel. I will mold your heart into what I want it to be. Remember, God's good all the time, right? All, he's always good. And if He's good all the time, when He gets a hold of our lives and He gets a hold of our hearts, it may be painful at first because we've got to get rid of some things and there's repentance that needs to take place. But oh, the joy of knowing Jesus on the other side of that heart surgery and Him saying, I got you. Your heart's mine. So what we say is we don't want to conform to the patterns of this world, but to His patterns. His way of thinking, His way of living. And that looks like the fruit of the Spirit, which is patience and love and kindness and, and joy and, and uh, long-suffering and self-control and all those things that we know. There's the actions of Jesus, that our actions begin to look like Jesus, that we begin to talk more like Jesus would talk, that we begin to walk more like Jesus would walk, and we begin to live more like Jesus would live. Jesus lived a surrendered life while He was on this earth, and He calls us to live a surrendered life. And we say, Lord, conform my heart. If you've ever been told here at Destiny that serving God will take a low commitment, I want to apologize to you. If I've ever said that, I repent. But it's not true. It's not low commitment to follow Jesus. It's zero commitment for Jesus to die for your sins. We didn't have anything to do with that part of it. Oh, well, yeah, we, what we had to do with it was that He took our sins to the cross. They were nailed with Him on the cross. It's because of your sin and my sin that Jesus had to die. But after that, we, we, have, we have work to do after that. And that work for us is to surrender our lives to Jesus. Jesus said, you take up your cross daily to follow me. In other words, I am surrendering my life. I'm working out my salvation with fear and trembling. I'm working. I'm being sanctified on a daily basis. I am growing closer to Jesus. And that doesn't happen by accident. That takes a committed life. It takes a clean heart, a covered heart, and a conformed heart to Him. Would y'all stand with me today? I was up this morning <clears throat> trying to see if I could hear turkeys gobbling outside of my house and praying and thinking about what God was going to do today and, the, and I just began to hear these words in my heart and I just wrote them down real quick and sent it to the guys and said hey let's just sing these four little lines and God just, just kind of gave me some words that I want us to sing and make a declaration with that amen come on let's just lift our hands in this place we love you Jesus God, take our hearts and make it what you want it to be. Take our lives and conform them to you. Come melt this heart of stone. Come make it more like you. Jesus, I need you now. Say, come melt, come melt this heart of stone. Come make it more like you, Jesus. Jesus, I need you now. To do what? To do what only you can do. Come on, everybody, sing now. Say, come. Come melt this heart of stone. Come make it. 
right now. Come make me more like you. Jesus, I need you now. Jesus, I need you now. To do what only you can do. To do what only you can do. Come on, say, come melt this heart of stone. Come melt this heart of stone. said yes to Jesus. You've like, I, I've never asked Jesus to be my Savior. The Bible says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. It tells us that if we confess with our mouth that He is Lord, we believe in our heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, that we can be saved. It's Romans tells us that. And maybe you've never said that prayer, or maybe you have said that prayer. And you just kind of, you really, really, your heart has been infected so deeply that you've just stopped serving Him and you need to come back to Him. Like, I need to come back home to you. Because there's levels of this that we deal with, but these are the first two. These are so important that you know that if you've never asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, He's waiting for you to say yes. And if you're like, I, I've run away from home and I need to come back home to Jesus, He's waiting for you to come back home. So if either, you've got either one of those things, if, if, you, if you say, Stephen, I want to pray a prayer to get my heart to Jesus today. Would you just slip your hands up across this room? Come on, who's in here? You say, that's me. I don't, I don't want to leave without giving you an opportunity. Thank you so much, my man, right here. Who else is in here? Yeah, come on, let's give God praise for that. That's good. Anybody else in here? You say, that's me. I need to, I need to receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. We don't, want to, we don't want to move until we do that. Our prayer team's about to come down. You guys go ahead and get in positions. Let's pray this prayer out loud with this gentleman that lifted his hand today. Dear Jesus, I thank you for dying on a cross for my sins. I repent of my sin today. I believe that you are Lord. I believe you rose from the grave. And I declare that you're my Lord today. I come to you today, Lord, and ask you to reset my life completely in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, let's give God praise for that. Amen. Hey, Ronnie. If you want to grab your friend, you can take him and we'll pray down here and just have them come. And uh, we're going to pray for this gentleman. And then here's what I want to say. How many of you in here will say with me, I need my heart reset. Like I need some things reset in my life. Because when you talk about unhealthy and unwilling and uncommitted, and it, it needs to be clean, it needs to be covered, it needs to be conformed to God, I know that there's some things I can work on. How many of you would say with me, there's some things I can work on there. I need a reset. And Lord, I just pray for everybody in this room, Lord, that's saying they need a reset. I pray you re reset our hearts. Reset our hearts, Lord God. We need you so much. We thank you, Lord, that our hearts can be conformed to you, Lord. 
And then all of a sudden our life, we begin to live in an overflow of our life where our heart begins to dictate how we live our lives. It begins to dictate how we think, how we speak, how we walk, how we talk, how we respond to tough situations and good situations. Lord, our heart becomes the good command center. It's still the command center, Lord, but if it's corrupted right now, Lord, we need you in it. So we need a reset today. We ask you to reset our hearts in Jesus' name. Everybody said, amen. amen. Hey, we love y'all. We love y'all. If you're a guest, make sure you drop those cards off when you go out. Guys, men, make sure you sign up out there in the foyer. We love you guys. Have a great day.
glory, all the adoration, for you deserve the highest praise. And with our hearts wide open and our hands held high, we see your beauty and our voices cry.
I just wanna. Learn.